Good morning to everyone again. For the sake of time, we're trying to sync this so that we're not over, but we're right involved with singing pre-service music for today. So please join us as the youth sing a few songs to join us in the resurrection of
He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Matthew 28, verse 6 and 7a.
Resurrection Sunday. Yes, he has risen. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord Jesus has risen from the grave. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. What an awesome God we serve. An awesome God. Today is a new day to serve and to witness about the goodness of our God who gave his only son Jesus Christ to re- for the redemption of our sins because he loved us that much, loves us that much. Hallelujah. And welcome to the First Baptist Church this morning, your point of contact for the kingdom of God. I am the Reverend Cynthia Meekins Maddox, and we are coming to you uh, from this amazing historic place located at 101 South Wilmington Street in the city of Rome, North Carolina, where our interim pastor is the Reverend David A. Dalby. Our mission here is to experience the power and the unity and wholeness of God's reign in our lives and in our community as the message and the meaning and the mission of Jesus Christ transforms us. Therefore, we serve as a point of contact for the kingdom of God in local, national, and also global outreach. Our theme for the year 2023 is still, God is doing a new thing in our midst. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. Isaiah 43, 16, 18 through 19. Therefore, therefore, Make every, every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Ephesians 4, 3 through 6. Now, let us worship the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear Lord, some of us have come to say thank you, Jesus. Some of us have come, dear Lord, just to say we love you. Some of us have come, dear Lord, to say we need you. But we come to give your name all glory, all honor, all praise. We invite your resurrected spirit into this place. For without your resurrection spirit, the Lord, there can really be no hope. Without your resurrected presence, there can really be no peace. Without your resurrected spirit, there can be no joy. So we just ask the Lord that you might bring your hope, bring your peace, bring your joy into this place. Bring it and allow it to rest in this place we call First Baptist Church. Bless the Lord Jesus, this service that is unto you. Bless the Lord Jesus, this service which has come to lift up your holy name. Bless this service, the Lord Jesus, which has come just to give your name some praise. Say thank you, the Lord Jesus, for it all. We just pray, the Lord Jesus, that you might order this service in whatever way you might see fit. Bless this service, the Lord Jesus, in a mighty way so that our spirit can have a transaction with the Holy Spirit 
so that our spirit can have a transaction with the resurrected spirit of Jesus Christ. And we'll be glad that we came and say, surely it was good that we were in the house of the Lord on today. We ask it all, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Morning. 
For truly this is the day the Lord has made. And every day we ought to rejoice and be glad in him. I, I feel like it now. I, he woke me up this morning. Clothing my right mind. My sheet was not my winding sheet. My mattress was not my cooling board. That's the way the old folks used to see it. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every crust of bread. Thank you for getting Jesus up on this morning. Happy resurrection morning. We are so blessed today to be able to come into the house of the Lord to glorify the King of glory. When somebody said, can't nobody do me like Jesus, is more than a rhyme or a song. It's the reality of life. And there's no way that you can be blessed by God and sit still on him to fold your arms and Sit tight, as if he never did anything for you. Because my Bible tells me, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed this morning, you ought to say so. You ought to have a say-so religion. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hold up, Miss Neal. You'll get me started. Now I'm going to try to regain my First Baptist composure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do we have any first-time visitors today? If so, will you please stand in the first-time visitors? Amen. Remain standing anymore. Sir, would you tell us your name? All right, Brother Price, is that your family with you? <laughs> We're all your family this morning. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We're so glad to have you and any other visitors that we have who chose not to stand. Oh, God bless you over here. I'm sorry I didn't see you. What is your name, dear? We are so pleased that you did. Amen. And this handsome man in the back. Put your mask down. Now, what was that? Rap Scott. God bless you this morning. It's so good to have you this morning. Over here. All right. We're glad to have you again. Amen. Praise his holy name. Let me share with you a, a short letter that came from Dr. Joyce Hillier Clark. It says, Dear loved ones, I write to you with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness for all you have done for me during my recent multiple illness in the last three months. From hospital visits, flowers, donations, get well cards, Christmas and Valentine cards, home visits, prayers, telephone calls, text messages, and meal delivery. My family and I have been blessed and I am grateful for all you have done and continue to do. You have made the difference in how I have survived and thrived during these past three months. God is still healing my body and the journey of healing continues to take time. I'm reminded of this each morning I awaken and find myself alive. Thanks again for sharing the journey with me because you have made the difference. Remember, Jesus is all the world to me, and I give him all praise. Love to all. Dr. Joyce Hilliard Clark. Amen. God is good. We want to continue to pray for her and 
to pray for Sister Ellen Powell, who had a fall and bruised her knee, and she's in the hospital right now, but I understand she's going to be okay. For Tyler Day and Joseph Carter and all the other people on the sick list, and all of those who are within the sound of my voice who need a healing touch, I'm going to ask God right now for his blessings upon the sick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes we receive our healing. By those awful lashes on his back. And Father God, we thank you for your love that looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. And in our covenant with you, Lord, there is healing. And so we ask, Father God, that you administer to each and every one of their bodies according to their needs. For those whose names have been called and those whose names have not been called, because, God, you know all things and all people. For you saw us in our mother's womb. And so, Father God, we know that you know all about us. You made these bodies, and you said it was good. And so blessed now, we pray. We pray, Father God, that you bind every hindrance, every spirit of infirmity that would work against us. And here today, under the sound of my voice, there are those, Lord, who need a touch from you. Forgive us for any unbelief, Father God, and increase our faith. Help thou our unbelief. Enable us to receive what you have for us today. Oh, Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And thank you in advance for the marvelous, miraculous work you're going to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me ask that you continue to give your tithes and offerings because we give because he has first given unto us. And he says that bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that may be meet in my kingdom and in my house. And that I'll do two things for you. I will open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to receive it. How many of you can use an overflow? All right. Amen. And not only that, he said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. God loveth. What kind of giver? A cheerful, hilarious giver. And as you go out, you will find boxes. The little metal brown boxes with the slit in the top is not for mail, it's for tithes. <laughs> Amen. And when you give it, give it cheerfully. You have one here, you have one in the back. And so we just praise God for all that he does. And as it would be whenever I get all riled up, I always forget something. So I have your announcement. Deacon Green, <laughs> advisory council meeting April the 20th at 7 o'clock in the Ward Chapel, church conference April 27th at 7 p.m. in the Ward Chapel. So that's two weeks. First is the advisory council meeting on the 20th and church conference on the 27th. We'll announce that again. The women's auxiliary will be at the doors when you leave. They, I think they have some treats for you. And so be sure to get your treat. Amen. I want to say thank you to the media ministry and to all and to the deacons and the deaconess and all who help make Good Friday a marvelous service. Amen. In spite of the rain, we had a nice crowd, and the Lord was in this place. And so we thank God for all that he does 
for us. At this time, I'm going to read my scripture for the morning. And then that will be followed by a liturgical dance with Stephanie and company. I say in company because I couldn't remember your name. <laughs> Tell me your name, sweetie. I'm Candace with my daughter, Adrian. Oh, Candace with her daughter, Adrian. All right, we got it. Okay, going to bless us this morning. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> On this Easter Sunday morning. The scripture for today is out of the book of John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter. You know y'all start bringing your Bibles to church. You can mark in it, shade it, do everything. God doesn't care, just so you get the word. It's not the book that's so sacred as the words in our hearts. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon, Peter, and other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strip of linens lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from a scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, as she told them that he had said these things to her. Isn't it amazing that the first proclamator that he has risen was a woman? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let us now be blessed by our liturgical dancers. Let's give the Lord a praise offering for them.
branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and strength. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
He lives. He lives, he lives, he lives. You ask me how, I know he lives. Every once in a while, you feel a little wheel turning. As old folks say, you feel a fire burning. He lives within my heart. Amen. Let us pray. Now, Lord, we come to the time of preaching. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, thou who art my strength and my redeemer, hide me behind the cross and let men see Jesus and him alone. Fill me again with thy Holy Spirit and let the preacher come. For if he doesn't come, there can be no preaching. But Lord, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive it, and a will to do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Then Lord, we ask that you bind every hindrance to your word. Pull down every power and principality, every wicked spirit in high places. And let your anointing fall on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the next little while, I want to talk about resurrection morning. But before we get to resurrection morning, there was Good Friday. Friday, when they nailed him to the cross. Friday, when a marvelous thing happened. God was doing a work for you and for me. The greatest thing that has ever happened in this world took place on that Friday. Friday, my Savior was hanging. Friday, he was suffering. Friday, he was your substitute and my substitute. For it should have been us there. And I was struck by this, this Friday when we had a moment of prayer and the sister said, I put you there. And I said, what a reality. Because God looked down through the corridors of time and saw you and me. And when we did not love him, he loved us. And gave himself that we might have a life. Zoe, the God kind of life. And have it more abundantly. And there on the cross... What took place was called the expiation, the forgiveness of your sin and mine. But then on top of that, there was an added bonus oh, because God help. has a wrath against sin. But when he looked at Jesus, his wrath cooled, called the propitiation the cooling, the assuaging of God's wrath. But then something else happened on that cross because he was hung between two thieves. And they were cussing and fussing, acting the fool. 
But then when one heard Jesus praying for the soldiers who had nailed him to the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Can you imagine? If it had been you and me, we'd have been talking about everybody. <laughs> but he said, forgive them. Yes. And suddenly this thief heard this and knew this is now no ordinary man. He said to the other one, shut up. You are not deserved what we are getting. This man must be the son of God. Father, remember me. You see, when he, when he acknowledged his own sin, he was repenting. Then he said, then he began to believe. <laughs> remember me when you come into your kingdom. You know, I wonder what happened when that thief hit heaven. I could see St. Peter and the boys looking and said, uh, who are you? He said, I'm a thief. Well, wait a minute. I don't know if you belong here. Uh, <laughs> Did you receive the right hand of fellowship? <laughs> no. You know anything about Baptist polity? I, I, I don't know. Have you been baptized? What is that? Well, tell me something. Why are you here? He said, the man in the middle said I could come. <laughs> That's what's important. That the man in the middle said that you and I can come in spite of us. <laughs> and so therefore... Therefore, we find that Jesus paid it all. And on that day when they took him off the cross and put him in a grave, and on the third day morning, he got up and said, all power's in my hand. Uh, but before he got up, though, you have to imagine, what was he doing? Because, you see, we are two-thirds spirit. And one third body. And we spend so much time on this body. And nothing hardly on the spirit. Which is the essence of us. But Jesus was spirit. Who took on a body. Called a God man. And Peter said that he went and preached. To the prisoners. There's been a debate about who he was preaching to. Some say that he was preaching to those fallen angels, the demons. They were locked up. And if he did, he probably said to them, uh, you should have asked somebody. <laughs> Others said he was preaching to the Old Testament saints. And I, I can imagine that if he was, he had a belt on with keys and he started unlocking the doors because he had the keys to the kingdom. And there he probably saw Abraham. And Abraham got up and wiped the sleep from his eyes and said, uh, who are you? And he said, I'm that city you've been looking for. And then he opened up the next gate, and here comes Isaac, and he said, Daddy, Granddaddy, who, who is that? He said, that's that ram in the bush. <laughs> and on and on, and he, he, he could go on, and he did his work, but on that third day morning, he got up. God got him up. And there in the dawn of morning, 
Here comes Mary. Talking to the other women. Can you hear who Who's going to roll away the stone? It's so big. It's, it's too heavy for us. And who's going to roll away the stone? I, I don't know what we're going to do, but this stone is like a weight on us. Who, who's going to roll away the stone? And when they got there, the stone had already been moved. You see, we have so many sources in our lives, but God is our resource. And, and, and when the stone was in the way, God, who is the resource, uh, sent angels and told them, roll away the stone and make a way. There are stones in our lives, weights in our lives. We wonder who's going to lift this stone. But our resource said, I got all sources and all powers in my hand. God will roll away your stone. Then we hear the say, he said, Mary, Rabboni, two names in the morning. <laughs> now, now, that wasn't original. I got that from God in the tailor. He preached a sermon on that. I wish I'd read it. He says, two names in the morning. Can you imagine just the two of them? Can you imagine yourself there? Heaven sought the Savior. Can, can you imagine in the darkness and the quietness of the morning? Just you and Jesus. But I got good news. <laughs> you can get up early in the morning and meet with him anytime. But he said, don't hold on to me. Because I go to your father. And to my father. To your God. And my God, why was he going? Hebrews shows it to us. For you see, when Jesus dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and said, it is finished, the veil split in the temple, which means there was no longer any separation between us and God. It also meant that we didn't need an intercessor. That we could go directly to God in the name of Jesus. And, and so, so therefore, therefore, Jesus was finishing his work. For you see, when he said it is finished, God raised him up and God's resurrection was his amen to Jesus' proclamation, it is finished. And he said, so it is. And there he went. Because you see, the old things are passed away. Well, you know, we talk about God is doing a new thing. And most of us get all excited because, you know, you think you're going to get some money and this and that and all. No, 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 no. He's talking about restoration in our souls. And here he's done a new thing because, you see, before, God only belonged to the Jews. <laughs> and they had a covenant with him. But then he was going to do a new thing because on Calvary, through the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb, he brought Jews and Gentiles into a new body, his body, called the body of Christ. So here he is completing the task. In, in the Old Testament, in, or at least in the 8th chapter, it talked about the high priests. And how the high priests had to go into the Holy of Holies. In the inner sanctum where he worshiped and poured blood on the mercy seat. But that was only good for one year. He had to keep going back and back and back. And not only that, it never did anything for him because you see, they were always aware of their guilt. But Jesus, my, my Bible says when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say not a part of this creation. He did not enter 
by means of the blood of goats and calves. But he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood. That's good news. No bull, no calf, no lamb. He is the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. His own blood he carried into the Holy of Holies, having obtained eternal redemption. So it doesn't mean you say one day and lost the next day. That we are eternally secure. And he gave us the Holy Spirit as a guarantor of our salvation. Oh, let me just give you some more of the word. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremoniously unclean. Sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then? With the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, offered himself unblemished, I mean he was perfect to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death. Let me take, let me pause a moment. Cleanse our conscience. You know we messed up. You know we did everything we were big enough to do. And it ate us alive. David said, my sin is ever before me. But because of the blood, once and for all, I don't have to keep going back with blood, with blood, with blood, but my conscience is clean because I understand that he made me holy and blameless in the presence of his father. He exchanged my old filthy garment for his that was nice and clean and white. He imputed his righteousness unto me. And when I stand before God, I, he sees Jesus. He don't see me. He sees his son. Isn't that good news? You know, you know, I, I get all amazed sometimes how we can be so arrogant. Because God made everything. And he did so much for us. His love is undeniable. No greater love than a man will lay down his life. Yes. Cleanses our conscience. So that we may serve. Everybody says serve. serve. The living God. <laughs> and for this reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Huh? Uh, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. And now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from sins committed under the first covenant. So even the Old Testament saints that believed in God got set free. But let me go on down a little further here. For it says, for Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary, which was only a copy. What we saw on earth, what they had in earth was a copy, a shadow of what was in heaven. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Mm. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that, to face judgment, man is to die once and then face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. 
and he will appear a second time. Huh? Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. He's coming back again. So let me just jump on over to Revelation. After he's gotten us all home, he's coming back again. You know, we live in a good Friday world. I know we do. When I looked at what happened in Tennessee, I said we still live in a good Friday world. When I think about how children are exploited and babies are killing themselves in depression, we live in a good Friday world. But Sunday is a coming. I find here then in Revelations, see I saw heaven standing open. He's coming again. And there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he had this name written, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, I tell you right now, he's coming again. And he will rule with an iron fist. The thing that frightened me most, the folks who think they're saved, who gave God their own self-righteousness. And in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the 23rd verse, it says, in that day, Many shall say unto me, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I heal the sick in your name? Didn't I usher in your name? Didn't I sing in your name? Did you, didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? He said, depart from me. I never knew you as one of mine. Ye workers of iniquity, be careful what you say out your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But I'm so glad this morning that he got up out of a barred grave. The power of the resurrection is real in our lives. The death and resurrection of Christ, the greatest events in history. And these events continue to be a necessity of daily life. But the resurrection is more than just an event that happened in history. It is a source of power that you can experience in your own life every day. The same power that brought Jesus from the dead is available to us through the Holy Spirit. You will see amazing transformation in your own life if you walk after the Spirit. You can use it not just for the future when you physically die, but you can use it now. For those who've been born again, eternity has already started. This power will get you through hard times. No matter what you're going through, Jesus is there. The resurrection assures us of this when nothing makes sense. And you're living in a good Friday world. Understanding everything seems hard, but God worked it out for good. For bringing the greatest blessings to our lives. During this time, we have an opportunity during hard times 
to press into God, to get closer to him. You see, we got three aspects of our lives. We got, first of all, deliverance, where we're born again. Then we got development, where we're being conformed into his image. And sometimes hard times have to come because we hard-headed. But in the times of trouble, men will turn to God. When we cry out like the prophet, Lord, how long, how long? But God knows just where you are. God knows just what you need. And he's able still to make a way where there seems to be no way. You can depend on your jobs. You can depend on your 401k. But that's just a source. God is your resource. He's able to do what no one else can do. In the midnight hours... When there's nobody there but you and the Lord. When pain is rocking your body. When depression is coming in on you. When you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Jesus is always there. In the stillness of the midnight. Precious secrets. He unfolds. We ought to learn to listen to him. I'm afraid there are too many who are so self-satisfied. You know, we'll go to church when we get ready and our jobs are more important than God and our money makes us somebody and what we do for a living elevates us up. But in the end, you get six feet of dirt and then the judgment. But today is the day of salvation. This day, if you've never received him as your Lord, this day, you ought to invite him into your heart. Because his resurrection power also gives you peace. You don't have to live with guilt and shame because the resurrection power forgave our sins. Ask God to give you the peace of knowing. That you're in a right relationship with him. It's the basis of our future hope. He's the one who makes it all possible for us. You know him, don't you? God's only son. Mary's baby. You know him, don't you? Jude and James' older brother. Matthew's king. Mark's suffering servant. You know him, don't you? Luke's great physician and Acts coming of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know him? He's the only begotten of the Father. Do you know him? He's a lily in the valley. Bright and morning star. Ferris of 10,000 to my soul. And when we get there, 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we'll have no less time to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Grace, God's amazing grace. Grace, how sweet the sound. Grace, that saved the wretch like me. Grace, that cleansed my heart. Grace, that healed my body. Grace, that wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Grace, that guides my footsteps. Grace, grace. Grace, 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 grace. God's amazing grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. How can we resist so great a salvation? When Jesus died and bled, and we spent all this time running around talking about what's wrong with the church. You need to be talking about what's wrong with you. 
And put you all on the altar. Because when you are judged, you will stand there alone. Huh? I, I, Stafford, I just thought of a story when I looked at you. I, you know, there, there, there was a story of this man who had done wrong and he was on his way to court. And when he got there, he, he saw his old frat brother, Joe. And he said, Joe said, what are you doing here? He said, I messed up. He told Joe his problems. And Joe said, okay, that's all right. I know the judge. I can fix it for you. So he fixed it. But the man never learned a lesson. Years later, he did the same thing. And when he got to court, that was Joe. But Joe was sitting on the bench. Joe gave him 30 years. He said, Joe, when I did it before, you fixed it. What happened? He said, yesterday, I was your lawyer. Today, I'm your judge. When Jesus sat on the, on the cross, he was our lawyer. But tomorrow, he'll be our judge. Let me ask you one final question. On judgment day, who will be your lawyer? The day doors of the church are open, let us stand. Perhaps this morning, there's somebody who's never asked Christ to be his Savior or her Savior. you just been coming in and going out. I know that story. But when he touches you, many are called, but few are chosen. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if you open, I'll come in and sup with you. Will you open the door today? Is there one who needs Jesus? Won't you come? Is there one who needs the Savior? You don't have to wait to get rid of nothing. Just come. God will cleanse you. Why are you coming? Ah! If you believe in your heart that he's the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth, won't you come? Hallelujah. Come on, sing, children. His name. Yes. Yes.
I'll cross that river. Yes. Yes, yes. And then as death. Way to victory. Light of glory and I know he lives because yes yes um, no the living just because he lives. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise and glory for this, our remembrance of resurrection morning. May the resurrection power live strong within us. That power that moved us from darkness to light. Out of the kingdom of the devil into your kingdom of your dear son. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. And as we part from this place, oh God, shine again in our hearts. That we may be all that you would have us to be. Let us not be distracted by the celebrations of the world, but cling to Jesus' name and to that old rugged cross. May it always be central in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask if Mrs. Neal will give us a moment of meditation. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the redeemed of the Lord said with one glad voice, Amen, Amen, Amen. Risen today,